What's going on, y'all? Uh, well, today's episode of watching paint dry. Evidently, this stuff's pretty cool for y'all, so I'll keep it up. Uh, I think I may have already updated these, but customers coming to pick these up today, they've been here for a little while. Um, I got a pair of 572s that got the new wrap kit. Um, and some fancy West Coast dogs. Fresh hair felt. They're just quick service all the way around. Um, we've got the Husqvarna diagnostic tool and this hooks up to a USB port, goes to the box and plugs into the carburetor. This is the cable to the box and this plugs in right there on top right there so these are a whole lot easier to access than the old days of having to unplug it from in here uh, you really had it to be a uh, contortionist to get it uh, one other thing i want to mention even though husky's always been famed for really good filtration and this is decent but you know i don't know if you can catch it in there with the light but there's there's still a fair amount of fines getting by i guess i'll suggest on the base of that maybe just putting the thin film of grease that'll help i don't think it's coming through the filter media but anyway let's get on with this so i've got it plugged in let's see if i can't get this set up just so get you guys a good view all right so i've already just plugged it in it recognized the saw the serial and then we can go up here to uh, operating history and see if we can zoom in a little bit there yeah I just hold it and no, now that ain't working there we go uh, so I was got just shy of 100 hours on it uh, almost 1500 starts um, yeah it looks like I've been in here so one star to go um was the most recent engine fuel settings adjustment um over here you'll see the current high and low settings it'll give you some idea on where you need to be for minimums maximums you can look at those numbers and decide if um the saw is chasing an air leak uh let's see we go down here um a little bit more max temp 148 it does get hot down here in South Carolina and then we get to see a look at hold on. there we go so this will show you your amount of run time that's an excessive amount of idle time um, in my experience and it's not as bad as it used to be on the earlier versions of auto-tune these things hate to idle and do partial throttle. Let me get back out so you can see. I get a, uh, I got a new camera on order, or a new phone on order, something that I have image stabilization, so you y'all won't have to put up with this nonsense. Um, so let's run through the auto tests. You can't see that. Let's see. All right, so. We're going to run auto tests. And this is, you know, just reminds you how little electronics are on these, you know, so don't get all freaked out over it. So we're going to start this. All right. So it's actuating the solenoid. You can hear that clicking noise nice and healthy. I'll say yes, I can hear it. It'll go on to the next one. Temperature 77 degrees. That's right, I got the wood stove on in the basement and I'm roasting because it warmed up today unexpectedly. Okay, now it's going to... I'm going to pin the throttle and then hit continue okay 
and then shows me that I now have my finger off the trigger and there's no throttle. So that's good. So that tests the temperature sensor on the carburetor, tests the solenoid, and it tests um, uh, your throttle at idle and at wide open throttle. All right, and then there's an option for updating firmware. Now this is pretty cool, and I don't know. All right, so everybody's happy. Update firmware, oh crap, I forgot about this. All right, current version. All right, so I've got a Husqvarna. Now what you'll have to remember is when you have, or if you ever want to replace a carburetor on an auto tune saw, you're gonna to have to have it programmed by the dealer. And the only reason why I do have this unit is because where I work is a dealer. So it's nice to keep my two days a week. Now I'm looking at this ignition coil and it's got a number stamped in it, part number, and it's really hard to see. Right, so I'm looking for, this is a 3101. It has to match the carburetor to the ignition coil. It does not recognize or won't automatically recognize. Okay, so currently this is 4.44 or 4.0.44. And I would assume that would be the original firmware that was installed in this. We're up to 4.0.60. I think this is super cool because as they get better uh, fuel settings, timing advance curve, that's one of the things that both Steel and Husqvarna do in, the, in those parameters. It can just not only adjust and meter the fuel, it does advance and retard the timing as it needs it to control heat. You know, think of Auto-Tune and, and M-Tronic as something very simple. It's trying to get as many RPMs as it can get while it's under load without going over a certain heat limit. You know, if you lean a saw out, it starts to get hot. That's bad. So it will start adding more fuel in to richen it up just a little bit. And, you know, all this is done at 10 times a second in very small increments. So... You know, for those people that think it takes tanks and tanks and tanks of gas, it's that's not the thing. Usually about four or five cuts, you know, with the bar buried. And, and, you know, let the saw, when you're trying to get a saw to act correct, if it's a little out of whack or out of tune, you know, go find the log, stick your bar in there, and don't dog it in. Nice, steady, firm. The more consistent you are, the faster it will start making adjustments. Don't make the software chase you, dogging around, being inconsistent. So nice, firm, steady cuts. Make it work for the RPM, but don't stuff it. Um, and, you know, three steady cuts in a 20-inch log, four steady-inch cuts in a 20-inch log, and it's 99% dialed in. Um, and it will continue to tweak as it runs based on, you know, um, whatever fuel you drop in it and air temperature, humidity, even though it doesn't recognize that, but those things, you know, your altitude as well, factor into how much fuel is needed. You know, the closer you are to sea level, the more fuel you'll need, the air's denser. If you're up in the mountains, the air's thinner, you need less fuel. So anytime you make a, a sweeping change in altitude, you know, it's always good to make a few cuts before you get rolling to kind of get it acclimated to its new environment um, and, and that's basically it you know we've been able to upgrade the firmware we've seen the operating history on it we've tested the electrical components and uh, this saw is ready to go nice quick easy and uh, typically you'll find a, a, a small bump in performance after upgrading the firmware just because they're really fine-tuning the fuel settings and, and what they can get away with ignition wise. All right, well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode of paint drying and some shaky footage. Oh, ashtray. 
Anybody want to take a guess which saw that's off of? What, what that muffler cover goes to? Leave that in the comments. Thanks, fellas. Y'all have a good day.